Hi, everyone. Welcome to Next Summit by Work Life Ventures. I'm Rebecca Fannin, a technology journalist and writer at CNBC and author of a new book, Silicon Heartland. Today, I'm joined by Jordan Taylor, co founder and CEO of Medley, a membership based organization that fosters personal and professional growth. Prior to founding Medley, Jordan worked in media as chief of staff at Mike and was a consultant at the Boston Consulting Group. Well, welcome, Jordan. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited for this conversation. Yeah, no, me too. I uh, wanted to find out what was your inspiration in starting Medley? So I have been building Medley for the past four years. Uh, and I would say inspired by a couple of things. Honestly, Medley is very core to who I am as a person and to what I care about most deeply, um, which is really uh, learning and, and growing with other people. So growing up, that manifests itself in, in, in sports, clubs, and academic environments. Uh, I've always been someone who is at my best in terms of my learning when I'm really uh, working towards something with others. Uh, in my final semester at Harvard Business School, I took a leadership development course that took place in small groups. Uh, the groups were groups of six. We'd spend two hours together every single week. And I would say that really sparked what is now Medley. Um, just seeing the power and, and the trust and vulnerability that came up in that group. And actually, after diving deep into the space, found that um, these types of experiences actually exist in a lot of other forums, but just aren't as accessible to a lot of people. And so um, after I graduated from business school, my co-founder, who's also my mother, Edith Cooper, uh, she had left uh, Goldman Sachs in, in January, uh, six, six months prior. And she actually decided and, and asked me, could we build Medley together? She was coming at it from a very different vantage point, but both of us just care a lot about creating spaces where people can perform to their potential and learn more about themselves. Um, and so she and I have actually been building Medley together, uh, which is a, a platform for small group coaching. So individuals can join, we match them into groups of eight to 10 other people who um, have the same goal for their Medley experience. And then we also work with companies who are really looking to provide space and leadership development skills for their employees. Uh, groups are a super powerful space to not only have the benefit of the connection and the belonging, but also um, get multiple perspectives and practice different skills with, uh, with others who are coming at things from, from a different point of view. So uh, I, uh, that's what inspired me originally, but what's inspiring me now is definitely uh, our community, our customers, our team, um, and also getting to work with, with my mother. Very interesting. So your timing seems to be perfect because of COVID situation and remote working and people feel disconnected from work and from communities. So your organization helps promote uh, this idea of joining together in teams. Uh, how would you describe the timing? Has this been great for you? And um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, outside of Medley, I think the, the past two and a half years have, have most certainly not been great and have been, you know, very, very challenging on a personal level and in, in, in the broader environment. But um, we originally were, were going to be an in-person experience. So we were planning on launching Medley in uh, April of 2020 uh, in a physical space in small groups in, with having people in rooms working with coaches pretty much the worst possible business model uh, in, in April of 2020. Um, and in March, we had to go back to the drawing board and, and try to figure out, you know, would people show up and be open and be vulnerable online? Uh, I would say, you know, throughout the pandemic, we saw one of the greatest shifts in, in uh, human behavior at a, an incredibly fast rate. And so uh, I actually, got married via Zoom. I, I think people did things online they never thought they would. Uh, and now it's been really amazing because um, we're able to create, you know, so much connection and, and, and um, openness, in, which is helping in, in, in this, this time where there's virtual, there's hybrid, um, and everyone's sort of figuring everything out. Well, the ability to be virtual and in person at the same time with your new uh, community-based uh, organization uh, it must have really helped to jumpstart the growth of, of your uh, startup. Yeah, it has helped. It definitely has helped. I mean, you know, something we've really seen in the past few months um, 
we're, we've just started having conversation with organizations and, and companies who are recognizing that the uh, demands on managers and leaders are much higher than ever before, and they, they want to find ways to support them. Um, I would say that has, uh, uh, starting to have those discussions, seeing that opportunity really start to pick up has been, you know, even in recent months, um, we're sort of stretched to capacity in terms of our, our partnerships, which is a good place to be. But um, I very much still view Medley and, and our journey as, as we're at the beginning and, you know, climbing the small hill for a, a big mountain. Okay. Well, I understand you've launched a pilot program with LinkedIn. It seems like LinkedIn could have gotten into this business itself, uh, but now you have this pilot program with them. Tell us about how that's working. Oh, that's, that's, that's gone really well. Um, we kicked that off actually last year and, and we're um, kicking off another uh, cohort of the program this year. Um, you know, it's not only companies, but also communities that are recognizing the power of small groups and the power of cohort based um, coaching. And so, um, you know, we are constantly thinking through and, and balancing our various priorities, but it's clear that um, conferences in person gatherings provide tremendous catalysts for connection and for growth. Uh, but in, in our research and in our experiences, what the real sort of growth and transformation does happen over time. And so in our model, groups will never just meet once, they will um, be matched and typically meet over the course of four to six to even 10 months. Uh, and we're seeing a lot of interesting use cases for our platform and for our approach to matching and our coaches, et cetera. And I think, you know, we'll continue to explore what those might look like. Well, I thought it was very interesting that you're using algorithms to match people with like interests. How do you find yeah. out? what their interests are? I mean, uh, are you dealing with kind of a privacy issue there? You know, we, we describe it now as sort of an art and science. We've iterated on our, our matching approach um, over the course of, of Medley's growth. Um, we are very transparent and open with our, our users and protect their privacy, you know, top, top and center. We do have a questionnaire that they complete uh, as, as part of the onboarding process to Medley where we ask what their goals are, what they're hoping to get out of the experience. Um, and uh, actually completed our SOC 2 compliance process last year, which is pretty early for a small business and got our certification done at that point. Um, you know, what we've seen work really well is having our algorithm take a first pass at the matching for the groups, but um, we're still at the point where our head of membership reads every single response. You know, there's a mix of multiple choice and free responses. We also speak on the phone with most people who participate in our groups. Uh, and we essentially try to optimize for shared context and goals. So matching together eight people who are in a career transition, uh, coming from eight different industries, eight different states, but who are in a very similar mindset in terms of what they're hoping to get out of the group. Um, and we might read something in their application saying, oh, and I recently started a family and I'm thinking about that too. And we'll take that into consideration as well. And so, you know, it's been really interesting for us as we uh, balance the the science and the art uh, and and people really feel the human connection and even the thought behind the medley experience, which is great because, you know, we're still at the stage where um, we're, we're able to do that and execute on that. Right. Well, what are some of these community groups that are forming? You know, we, so we don't label our groups explicitly. Um, so when someone joins, we actually match them into they're, they're part of the broader medley membership and we shared them some context around why they were matched, but we don't really uh, label them around, you know, whether it's a career transition or, um, uh, or managing a life transition or, or something on that sort. Um, we do match the groups around central themes. And so we have uh, a few different uh, curriculum tracks that we uh, deploy and, and leverage with the coaches. Um, and those are typically around career transition, investing in leadership. Uh, that is a really common theme. Um, navigating and finding better work-life balance. That is something that is, is, comes up very often and is, 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 um, has been a topic for many of our groups. Um, and then uh, a career transition, life transition is another one. Um, and so, yeah, those are four, of, of four themes that have been fairly consistent. Um, we also will match groups around other themes just based, in, based on the population, but it's really clear right now in this moment, we're in still such a large collective transition that most people are taking a step back and thinking, what do I want 
which is very empowering, which is, it, and it's really inspiring to see. Uh, and companies at the same time are starting to have to um, uh, support their workforce who are asking that exact question. Uh, and so the, the expectations on both sides have been something that we, you know, we, we see this vantage point in because we partner with CHROs and, and talent development leaders. Uh, and then we also have individuals who go to our website and, and sign up to join. So that's been a huge um, you know, area of, of learning over the past few months as well. Well, how are you seeing the relationship between the employee and the employer shifting since this whole great resignation and great reflection? <sighs> It is, it, I mean, I've seen it shifted in a few ways even more recently. So uh, firstly, the employer-employee relationship has become um, uh, a lot clearer to the employee from the sense that employees, employers are forced to state their values, to state what they stand for. If they aren't doing that, that's a statement in itself. And employees, still the best talent does have a lot of leverage and they're seeing, you know, is my company standing for X issue or are they not? How do I feel about X issue? Do, how comfortable do I feel related to that? And so, you know, certainly the role of companies in terms of stepping into the macro environment and having uh, and really playing a role uh, in, in terms of social issues has been, you know, obviously a huge shift uh, over the past two years compared to the previous 20 years. Wow. And so that I think has, has, uh, I think that'll start to play out where people who, who want to be at a company that's very outspoken are more likely to be drawn to that. People yeah. who don't might go to a company where, you know, they're less, they're less outspoken. Is there really a role for the employer in cultivating purpose in an employee's life? Is that kind of a role that they really need to embrace or is this something new? You know, I think, I think people, and what we've seen is that people are different. So some people uh, want work to be their source of purpose and fulfillment in their life. And some people don't, yeah. and that's okay. And that's beautiful and that's amazing. And so, you know, do I think every company needs to be striving to be the central source of purpose and fulfillment in their employees' lives? No, because I also think that's unrealistic. And I think that, uh, I don't think that that's what everybody wants. People have different values and that's what's amazing about, about humans, about people. Um, do I think that uh, companies need to be clear around what their expectations are, around what they stand for um, and what they don't? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that, that expectation has, has been a shift uh, and employees are now much more vocal than they ever than they ever have been, which I think is very very exciting. Um, and I, you know, something I think about a lot is how to create space for people to articulate their sense of purpose, to find it in this rapidly shifting world. Maybe it is work for them, maybe it isn't. And then from the company vantage point, how can companies really give people that space, the space to figure out? Uh, and ask some of the really hard questions. Um, and so, you know, do I think the company needs to be providing that exact purpose for people? No, but do I think that uh, a company, the company's role in supporting people's holistic growth and well-being, is is becoming uh, more part of the company's role? Um, absolutely, and at least companies that really um, stress and uh, invest in their employees' holistic growth and make that part of their value prop as an employer. I think I think that that comes out. Yeah, it's mental health and physical health both. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, and, and so, so there's only one. You know, there's only one you, right? So you know how you, how you're operating physically, how you're feeling, how you're showing up at work. It's all related, um, and companies are realizing that. Um, you know, the 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 training models where you put a manager in front of a an exercise or a video to watch that's not really yeah. getting people. You know. The, the tools right. and skills they need. Right. And, and uh, what about all the benefits that we've seen the tech giants in Silicon Valley offer their employees, like, uh, you know, free laundry, free food, you know, uh, free haircut on site, transportation to and from work. Does all that stuff matter? Or are you talking about something that's deeper and more meaningful and lasting? I think that, uh, unfortunately, 
those benefits, um, look, they mean something to, to many people and otherwise these companies would not be investing in them. Yeah. But I am fairly confident that uh, uh, there's much more to feeling fulfilled, feeling connected, uh, feeling a, finding a sense of purpose within yourself. Um, and, you know, it, it's interesting. I do think that the tech companies and, and many large organizations, because there's uh, several massive employers uh, throughout the world, they are starting to think and, and shift, you know, how they think about coaching and how they think about uh, supporting their employees. Absolutely. I mean, you know, we're, we have conversations with uh, CHROs and CP, CPOs every week, and we have not yet once been met with a, I have no idea why someone would want a group or access to a coach or a, a greater sense of belonging. We're, we're not having to sell the, the, uh, the challenge. It's, it's really top of mind for them. And um, I'm excited about all the innovation in, in the space uh, that's hopefully going to really change the employee experience, but also empower individuals to, to uh, access resources and take charge on their own. Well, Medley is a membership-based organization, and by membership, that's individuals, right? Yes. So we, we partner with both individuals and companies. So okay. um, someone can go to our website and sign up. Uh, a company can also sponsor employees to join the membership. Uh, and uh, with large enterprise, we can actually you know, deploy our, our group coaching methodology internally. I see. And what's the business model? Um, so we charge a, uh, a membership fee for our consumers. Um, it is uh, 1600 for an annual membership. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a sliding scale though, and I think it's around 15 or 20% pay uh, much less than that membership fee because for us, we want to be as inclusive as possible. And this is a way for us to do that. Um, and then when we partner with enterprise, they typically, um, uh, we, you know, we do open houses for them. We kick off and create a cohort within the company. And so that price point is a little bit higher, but um, yeah. Okay. And I, I know that you've also raised a significant financing, venture financing fairly recently from some big names. So that must be helping with the scaling up with the entrepreneurial organization such as yours. Yeah, and it has, it has. Um, you know, we raised our seed round uh, in August of last year. So a little, a little over a year ago now, which is wild. Uh, and Andreessen Horowitz led the round and we've loved working with them and, and the partners we work with are amazing. Um, and, you know, for us, it was important that we had investors on our cap table um, who really understood and cared deeply about the space. Um, and then in addition to having Andreessen, we had a series of, um, of different angel investors and um, we're really proud that, um, you know, on a numbers basis, the, the majority were women or people of color, which is just really important to us. So. So what's it like working with your mother? <laughs> it is it is a lot of fun. Uh, she's a very um, uh, inspiring person, and you know, it's I would say the benefits of, of working and founding a company with a family member uh, is that we we started and went into it with so much trust, uh, you know, of of people to, to work with and of a partnership. We both care so deeply about each other and are supporting one another constantly. Um, I would say, uh, you know, the biggest thing I've taken away from getting to work with her over, over the past four years um, that has inspired me for, you know, the rest of my life is, is you can be at a, a point where you've achieved a lot of things in your career. And she, you know, was, you know, the, the, uh, the chief HR officer of Goldman. She now sits on the board of Amazon and Pepsi, uh, several nonprofits. And she also runs a seed stage startup <laughs> and she went from, you know, having uh, uh, thousands of people in her division at a company of 35,000 people going to a team of just me and her uh, trying to create something from nothing and is constantly just looking to learn uh, and to challenge herself and be in that un uncomfortable place. And so um, that's something that I really try to, to model and have taken on is, okay, how can I if I feel that feeling where I feel slightly uncomfortable, I'm like, oh, I'm nervous about this, or I'm not sure I know how to do this. I just sit with it and lean into it. And that's something that I've really taken away from, from working with her. And, um, you know, she just is, uh, has a, an incredible ability to, to connect with people and learn about them. And that's something that I also 
um, constantly am in awe of and, and try to, to learn and emulate. Oh, that's great. How did you come up with the name Medley for uh, your oh. startup? Well, oh, that's a, I appreciate you asking that. Um, actually, in thinking about the name uh, and coming up with ideas, you know, they have all these exercises and none of them were really resonating. And yeah. I instead thought, let me think about a person who really embodies what we're trying to do. And the first person who came to mind was a person named O'Neill Medley. He was my high school coach. Um, and he unfortunately passed away when I was in college. But, um, you know, I went to a, a, a high school where I was one of the few black students and he was a, 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 um, a black coach and he was always looking out for me and uh, really taught me a lot of confidence in my own mindset and my own ability to get through discomfort. Um, and I miss him a lot. And, and Edith, actually, my mother knew him very well too. And so in thinking about the name, his last name really jumped out. And then we, we realized there were just all these amazing, um, it was the perfect fit because a medley is a mix of things. It could be a mix of vegetables. It could be a mix of swimming strokes. Um, and uh, that's really what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring together and cultivate the magic of when you pull together people and things from a different mix. Um, and so, you know, it's two dimensions. We feel like a really great fit for what we're trying to do. Yeah, it's a great name. So what do you see as the major challenge remaining in this connection in this whole new world, uh, remote world of employees, their work and their workplace? What's the biggest challenge that still needs to be dealt with? Whew. Probably the fact that we don't know what the biggest challenge is because it seems like the universe is just, you know, shaking things up uh, every other month. But, you know, I really do see this, uh, the, the remote hybrid challenge mm -hmm. as something that, you know, at least we're trying to work through uh, and many of the people in our ecosystem are trying to work through. Um, I am thinking a lot around how, you know, Gen Z for people who have graduated from college in the past two, three years, uh, the mentorship and the connection that they're missing out on if they haven't had the chance to work in person with others. I'm, I'm you know, curious how that's going to play out for, that entire generation of, of new, new workers. Um, and I do think that the, uh, the demands on, uh, on leadership on around the essential questions of purpose and um, even social values is going to be a continued challenge. Uh, and the, the expectations are concretely different from what they were five years ago. I mean, when Edith was at Goldman, she she released a piece actually on LinkedIn uh, around her experience as a, a black woman in, in financial services. And it was like revolutionary. It was like no one had said anything or acknowledged race in a in a corporate environment, especially at Goldman, you know, for for a long time. And, and now that's much more um, front and center. So, you know, uh, yeah, several challenges. OK, well, very good, Jordan. We have to wrap now, but thank you so much for joining us today. It was great to have you here. Um, be sure to stick around and we'll see everyone in the next event. Thank you again. Thank you, Rebecca.